Recorder, I'm ready for you. I've learned over several millennia that it is necessary for events to unfold and settle before transcribing what I witness. I'll now disclose everything I've observed about a very extraordinary pantheon of mutants. Today on the Comic Book Report, X-Men Grand Design Omnibus by Ed Pisker. Stick around and check it out. Greetings all, my name is Dominic and you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I'm bringing you a rather unusual omnibus collection from Marvel Comics. But before we begin, if you're interested in picking up your own copy of this book or other collected editions, please check out our channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. Use my code, the Comic Book Report, at checkout for $2 off of your order. Using my affiliate code or links will give me a small commission, but it's a fantastic way to support the channel at no additional cost to you. Thank you so much for considering. Now let's dive in to today's X-Men Omnibus Review. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The issues in this volume were written and illustrated primarily by Ed Pisker. The main series of issues in this omnibus were published by Marvel Comics beginning in 2017. The volume itself collects X-Men Grand Design issues 1 and 2, X-Men Grand Design Second Genesis issues 1 and 2, and X-Men Grand Design Extinction issues 1 and 2. Also included in this omnibus edition are recolored reprints of X-Men issue 1, Giant Size X-Men issue 1, and Uncanny X-Men issue 268. And finally, this oversized hardcover comes in at 448 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that X-Men Omnibus by Ed Pisker. Right away, I love the colors they use for the art on this book, especially this cover art here with the black, white, red, and yellow. Just a really sleek design. I love looking at it. It has a very classic X-Men feel. I know as well that each side of this dust jacket is representative of some of the cover art we saw on some of the previous editions that were published for this X-Men Grand Design. I believe that they published them as kind of gallery-sized paperback editions, if I'm remembering correctly. I never owned those. This is my first time going through X-Men Grand Design, and I am a big fan of this omnibus. But as much as I'm a fan of it, I do want to make sure that everyone knows what they're going to be getting with this collection, as it's a bit atypical for a Marvel Omnibus. But before I go ahead and delve into that, I do want to take a closer look at this dust jacket. I'll show you the interior flaps, spread this out so you can get one more quick look at the cover art. Then I'll show you the under the dust jacket artwork on this volume, just so you can get a better idea of what to expect. Now, this is an oversized hardcover, the same dimensions as the rest of the Marvel Omnibus line, thankfully. However, the paper stock is something a bit different. You might notice that this size of this Omnibus looks fairly sizable to only have a 448 page count. And there's a reason for that. The whole design of X-Men Grand Design is meant to look intentionally aged, as if you were finding an old school Silver Age comic book that's been lost to time, yellowed, dirt, ground things like that and that's part of the artistic aesthetic of this whole book this whole work but because of that the paper stock is notably different from the rest of the Marvel omnibus line that I've collected so far I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a matte paper as it's still a very high quality paper stock it has elements of glossy and matte paper to it and I really can't decide what kind of paper it is but what I can say, it's certainly a thick, sturdy paper stock that's not going anywhere. In fact, it's quite a bit thicker than a lot of the paper we've been seeing in these Marvel Omnibus editions. And of course, it had that nice sewn binding. 
And now we'll make our way into the collection proper, but I did want to do a couple more notes on this edition as a whole. Another thing to mention is that of its 448 pages, or whatever I mentioned earlier, only roughly maybe 250 or so pages of that are the actual X-Men Grand Design storyline. The rest of that content are the three-issue reprints from different times in X-Men history, recolored in that same aged, um, old-school-looking paper stock. There are additionally a few pages of random extras and also a huge portion that just reprints the comic book script for this whole X-Men Grand Design by Ed Pisker. They're done in sort of a landscape style and comprise basically the back half of this book. So for actual comic book content that you're getting with this entire omnibus, you're somewhere north of 300 pages in total, the rest being a lot of these scripted extras and again the paper stock's just a bit thicker. So this was certainly an interesting choice to make an omnibus, but I'm happy to see it. I really enjoyed my read through this. And now that I've given all my notes about the actual edition, let's go ahead and transition into talking about what this book is actually about. But before we do, if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, but you like comic book reviews like this, or haul videos, or a bunch of other comic book miscellany, shorts, and daily community posts, well, frankly, I'd love to have you aboard, so please consider subscribing. Thank you so much. Now back to the review. What Grand Design really is, is not as much a new narrative within the X-Men universe, but rather a creative retelling of roughly the first 30 years of X-Men's comic book history. The setup of the story is basically a loose frame narrative of the Watcher basically transcribing what he has observed from the early history of the X-Men to a, well, transcriber. The Watcher is not a huge central character in this book, as he's doing really the retelling of the stories. We get to visually witness a lot of the highlight reel of the first 30 years of the X-Men comic franchise, with just a few interstitial little blurbs from The Watcher. Part of the creative genius behind this book, however, is the way he links all the narratives together into what can really feel like one cohesive narrative. This is a really brilliant way for those that have always wanted to delve into the X-Men universe but have been absolutely daunted by the idea of jumping in on all of the history. This is a great way to brush up on the first 30 years without having to go back and read the issues. Now, I've reviewed the first few omnibuses of the uncanny omnibus Chris Claremont era, I've personally read some of the early X-Men issues, and have dabbled in and out of this franchise. I'd have to say, there's so many classic issues that should be read, but if you can't track down the issues, they're too expensive, or you don't want to deep dive into all of this history that could be important, this is a great almost Cliff Notes version of those first 30 years. It also serves as an excellent primer on some of the primary X-Men characters that so much of the universe seems to revolve around within the Marvel Universe. I think this book also serves as a fantastic refresh for longer time X-Men fans that have maybe read some of these incredible issues once upon a time, but maybe don't want to go through all of the effort to reread every single one of these issues or reading all of these different story highlights, but kind of just want to refresh on the mythos, on the comic book history in a very kind of concise, compact way to remember all of it. That's where I think X-Men Grand Design comes in as just such a striking way to revisit X-Men history. It is absolutely a love letter to X-Men fans, and it's done pretty darn well. Pisker's art style is very reminiscent of kind of a newspaper comic strip sort of art in the best way possible. The character models are really distinct and a little cartoony at that. The panel layouts are pretty straightforward, but again, it just conveys the message very well. Also creatively, Pisker starts the history of the X-Men all the way back to kind of the first mutant era with Namor the Submariner before jumping forward to the events of, you know, Charles Xavier, Magneto, that first early X-Men team. We go from there, some of the highlights into, you know, the new like second Genesis wave of X-Men when you start to get into that Chris Claremont lineup of X-Men, you know, bringing in characters like Colossus and Nightcrawler and Storm and of course Wolverine and it traces that history, you know, we go through the Phoenix Saga, the Dark Phoenix Saga, we go through all the stuff with the Brood, we get through like Mutant Massacre, it goes through things like Inferno, and the book kind of starts to cap right around the kind of 
Genosha era, Extinction Agenda era, before very creatively leading into the Days of Future's past universe and kind of going back to that reset. Really just a fantastic chapter in X-Men history represented here. I did think it was really creative that they actually built the conclusion into the Days of Future's past universe before kind of bringing that back to try to stop it through the time travel mechanic there with Kitty Pride. But again, just a really fun set of issues here. Uh, the Again, the three divides of this among Grand Design, the Second Genesis, and the Extinction. These were, again, all kind of periods within X-Men history, and they're bookmarked really well in this collection. But you can read all six issues back to back to back to back to back and just read it as one streaming narrative for, again, roughly those first 30 years. I think one complaint about this omnibus I could definitely foresee, they're not necessarily my complaints, but just something I want to clarify and talk into, is again the idea of the page length. This is an under 500 page omnibus that really only has, you know, roughly 300 something pages of actual comic book content, and I think that that can be a bit of a dissuader for some considering this omnibus. I think that that should just be something you're mindful of when you go to get your deal on this book. I don't think that this is a hundred dollar book book for me, but if you can find it for a good value for the, what you're getting, it can still be a really worthwhile read. I also think if you don't have ways of reading some of the early X-Men greats, but you want to catch up and have something in your collection that feels like you can brush up on the story, this could be a really good asset as an alternative to some of those other omnibuses that may or may not be out of print. Another possible critique of this book, which is again maybe a selling point to others, is the intentionally aged look of the paper. I do again think it's definitely pretty jarring, especially when you pull it out next to all of your other omnibuses. I think again, it has a really different visual style. I think one of the things that makes this a perk is it lends to the kind of immersion and the storytelling experience that they're trying to do. It's really clear that Pisker has leaning into the kind of the nostalgia and the mystique of these kind of old comic book greats and the kind of grit and grime look to some of the aging on these paper is really just pretty stellar and to see a kind of aged interpretation of some of these other classic issues that are reprinted at the back of the omnibus or I guess technically toward the middle because it's before the script pages is just a real treat I think it's really eye-opening you look at it in different ways and I think that the saving grace here as well is that the paper stock is so thick it's a really nice brand of paper and again it's hard to tell if it's more matte or glossy it certainly looks like it ought to be matte but it does have a very smooth finish to it so maybe it's a gloss again sort of hard to tell what's going on here but it is a thick kind of archival like paper I think one complaint about this omnibus I could definitely foresee, they're not necessarily my complaints, but just something I want to clarify and talk into, is again the idea of the page length. This is an under 500 page omnibus that really only has, you know, roughly 300 something pages of actual comic book content, and I think that that can be a bit of a dissuader for some considering this omnibus. I think that that should just be something you're mindful of when you go to get your deal on this book. I don't think that this is a hundred dollar book for me, but if you can find it for a good value for the, what you're getting, it can still be a really worthwhile read. I also think if you don't have ways of reading some of the early X-Men greats, but you want to catch up and have something in your collection that feels like you can brush up on the story, this could be a really good asset as an alternative to some of those other omnibuses that may or may not be out of print. Another possible critique of this book, which is again maybe a selling point to others, is the intentionally aged look of the paper. I do again think it's definitely pretty jarring, especially when you pull it out next to all of your other omnibuses. I think again, it has a really different visual style. I think one of the things that makes this a perk is it lends to the kind of immersion and the storytelling experience that they're trying to do. It's really clear that Pisker has leaning into the kind of the nostalgia and the mystique of these kind of old comic book greats and the kind of grit and grime look to some of the aging on these paper is really just pretty stellar and to see a kind of aged interpretation of some of these other classic issues that are reprinted at the back of the omnibus or I guess technically toward the middle because it's before the script pages is just a real treat I think it's really eye-opening you look at it in different ways and I think that the saving grace here as well is that the paper stock is so thick it's a really nice brand of 
paper. And again, it's hard to tell if it's more matte or glossy. It certainly looks like it ought to be matte, but it does have a very smooth finish to it. So maybe it's a gloss. Again, sort of hard to tell what's going on here, but it is a thick kind of archival like paper. Another kind of interesting winking feature to this whole book is you get some of Pisker's humor within the contents of this book. While this book is certainly not funny, and while the X-Men comics themselves do have a degree of humor, there is this kind of knowing in that this story is being retold through the lens of the Watcher and through Ed Pisker's filter, trying to just again create one kind of straight line through the continuity of those first couple decades of the X-Men history, that there's some cheeky sort of humor humor, winking at the camera kind of moments that are really funny. And sometimes it comes down to the dialogue choices or the way some of the characters look or are framed or their facial expressions that really just kind of tease out the sort of internal humor within this book itself. I think that this is really a masterstroke from Pisker as it's pretty subtle and it never really breaks uh, the storytelling or the world or anything like that. And I don't even know if people that only read this will pick up on the humor as much as the people that have read all of these X-Men books they're talking about. The way that they kind of just do it together, there's just some interesting jokes between the characters or little lines that are just, they strike as a little more funny when you read this really fly-by, bird's-eye sort of overview of this era within the X-Men history. That was a small facet within this collection that I enjoyed. And overall, personally, I really enjoyed this book. I'm so happy it exists. Again, I might use this as a way to brush up on some of the stories uh, if I don't want to bring out all the other omnibuses or kind of seek out the issues I don't have. This is a really great way to just refresh. I also just think it's a great volume to have to show kind of a variety within the Marvel Omnibus line, as I can truly say I don't have anything else in my collection quite like this. However, I will say that as much as this is a great primer for all those stories, it doesn't have maybe some of the depth that these actual comic issues may have because we're doing a flyby overview. So there is a level of while this is all one cohesive narrative within this, within that kind of framing device, there are some details that are of course lost and for the most part, you are going at kind of a breakneck pace through the X-Men history. So again, this is a very different kind of omnibus reading experience, and it should just be noted before you pick this up. I've also heard people talk about online the fact that these used to be gallery editions, and I can certainly see that rewarded just to see this in an even bigger format. Because the artistic license used for this book and just kind of the creativity and how it was made, I'm sure that even more oversized format would be a real beaut to behold. I didn't find the dialogue boxes or the lettering or anything to be too shrunken or anything like that. I think the images were still all great. I would not know that this was presented often in that gallery size unless I had heard about it beforehand um, but again a great format if you can find this omnibus edition again it's just such a cool thing within the X-Men universe now and I'm really happy to see it while I was talking, you probably saw a few of those reprinted classic issues, as well as those few random extras. Uh, the rest of this is really just that reproduction of the scripts pages. As you can tell, I went ahead and showed you so you can see the portrait sort of layout where it's two pages of script per page, and it basically goes through the whole setup. I know because this guy is both illustrator and author, when you say script, it's basically the storyboards of like the entire uh, comic here. This was so much fun to skim through. I think for fans that are actual comic book creators or aspiring comic book creators or writers out there, this could be pretty eye-opening just to see one man's process as he goes about comic construction. Uh, there are some definitely interesting like notes or just how the way these things were laid out and done. It's cool to see the kind of intermediary stages before the final product. I don't know if I've had a book like this as well where you get basically the entire script uh, pretty phenomenal stuff. Again, I'm sure it was a way to pad out this to call it an omnibus. Uh, but again, it's fun. It's a quick skim through. But if again, you're interested in more of the comic book creation, this could be a fun little facet for a lot of collectors out there. It was a fun facet of the book, but by no means a selling point for me. Uh, but overall, just wanted to note it so you can take a look. And after the scripts, there will be a few random pages of a couple other uh, extras, pieces of art, things like that that round out the collection as a whole. 
Uh, but this is basically it. Uh, before we get to the grade, however, I did want to also present just a side-by-side. -side. I'm going to dig out uh, one of my old X-Men omnibuses so you can see what the X-Men omnibus reprint looks like uh, in an omnibus edition from the actual issue versus what Pisker did when he recolored uh, some of the issues that they reprinted at the back, those three issues. Uh, the one I'll be noting is from X-Men issue one, so the very first issue of the X-Men comic. That way you can see just how striking this coloring job really is. Okay, and here's my side-by-side uh, -side comparison of that X-Men issue 1. Again, recolored and reprinted in this Grand Design Omnibus, and then where it is in the just traditional X-Men Omnibus Volume 1. You can see just the white, clean reprint in the X-Men Omnibus Volume 1 versus this aged, colored, uh, like, affected sort of reprint. Uh, so there are three issues, again, that are reprinted in this way, included in Grand Design, as well as the Grand Design issues themselves. So again, just a really cool aged look. I think they did a great job on the aged look reprint. Uh, I prefer the more cleaner look, but again, just wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison so you guys can know what you're getting. And with that out of the way, I think it's finally time I stop and give this X-Men Grand Design Omnibus by Ed Pisker a grade. While this whole omnibus didn't have a ton of original story content, this is one of the most artistically creative ways I've ever seen the history of X-Men portrayed. And with the paper stock and formatting style, this is truly the most unique Marvel omnibus I have within my collection. For these reasons and so many more, the Comic Book Report is happy to give X-Men Grand Design Omnibus by Ed Piskor a B. There are better X-Men omnibuses out there, but with this unique artistic style and the way that this can refresh an entire three decades of X-Men history, well, frankly, this is an unrivaled collection. If you're looking to revisit the classic X-Men era without actually revisiting the classic X-Men era, or simply want something new and refreshing on your omnibus bookcase, consider X-Men Grand Design. And with a big thank you to our channel sponsor, Organic Price Books, that's going to do it today for the comic book report. Please don't forget to leave your like and comment, and until next time, have a good one.